Hey guys, Too Legit City here. Today we're going to be going over something that you guys asked about actually. There are some of the comments asked about how I do my centralized power. So today's video we're going to be going over our centralized power brick. In this power brick, we are not making a industrial power brick, which is a little bit different, where you not only put your generators inside with your batteries and transformers, you also add in things that generate a lot of heat, like glass forges, so that you could have the temperature of inside the box to become steam. The reason why I didn't want to build that was because of the amount of steel you needed to have. I didn't want to mass produce steel, so instead we're using just a centralized power box for today's video. Now to get it started, this is the power box inside the insulated tiles. The design is really up to you, but what we did was we have our generators right here. Both of these rooms are power plants, meaning that we could have these with the NG tune-up for more power output. Each set of generators has its own smart battery, and we have space for expansion down below. This is going to be specifically for petroleum generators if I do need the extra power but that's only if I need it. Otherwise though, you could see that on the automation, the smart battery at the bottom gens and the smart battery at the top gens. What we're doing with the power right here is even though all the power is connected on a heavy watt conductive wire, we have two separate smart batteries because we want to prioritize using the natural gas generators over the hydrogen generators. That's because we have two natural gas geysers and only one hydrogen geyser. I wanted to utilize the gas that we have more resources of. And because of that, we set up the smart batteries as such. I wanted the top end to be 90%. And because I wanted the natural gas to kick on faster, the load threshold is set up to 55. The hydrogen that's only going to kick up if the natural gas cannot keep up is set to 50%. Both the high threshold is going to be identical, but the lower the threshold, the less of a priority it is. That means if you want to run one resource over the other, make sure that the smart battery controlling the automation of those generators are set to a higher low threshold. Now, that's just how to distribute power. Along the side of this, we have what's called a power strip. I am attaching all of the powers through transformers. And by doing so, you can see that we have conductive wires come out of these transformers on the side of my base. These goes across the floors of my base so that I can have lights when I need to, power my suits, power my research. And if I want things for a recreational room over here, we could have that as well. Not only that, we have a top row right here with more transformers so that we could actually distribute the power a little bit more cleanly. By having our wires run like this, we just run the wires to where they need to be and that all the power comes from this brick. Of course, this does not include things like a spawn that's standalone. It's not powering anything outside of the spawn buildings anyway, so that's not going to be incorporated in this. For another thing with this, we have a door crusher setup. If you guys don't already notice, we set up our CO2 release from the natural gas off of a high pressure vent inside the same room, and we are door crushing the gas down here. The door crusher will send you a link down below if you guys want to learn more about this. It's a very simple design. We have two triggers, a timer for green and red so that it opens and closes, a element sensor so that it only functions once the CO2 reaches this level. And because CO2 is the heaviest gas, it will always be at the bottom. Not only that, this signal is only controlling the top two doors. We have to buffer the other doors below it so that we could time the doors to close to delete the gas. This also deletes the water if it happens to spill out. So if that happens to happen, that has a double function, but this maintains so that our room never overpressurizes and have a absurd number of CO2 so that the high pressure vents always work. Over here, you can see that we're running mesh tiles so that the polluted water drips to the bottom. We simply pump that out and run that into an electrolyzer. As you can see down here, we have infinite gas chambers. Very simple. We had the high pressure gas vent that overpressurizes over 20 kilograms, and we spilled a little bit of crude oil onto the floors. It's really your target, it's 10 kilograms. I'm just hitting half of that. And crude oil would be the best as this will not disappear when the volume of gas reaches absurd numbers. If you were to use something like water, the water starts to float around and disappear randomly once the gas pressure gets high enough. That gas pressure is usually around the four digit mark, but more over 2000 kilograms per tile. Something like that animation right there, if you just saw that. But 
that's the infinite gas chambers down below. Now with the power plants, you know about how they work. The NG tune-up buff gives you more power with the microchips, which is why we have the power plants. And the thing about this is that if the generators are always disabled, like my hydrogen generators are, they will not have the NG tune-up. The NG tune-up can only be applied when the buildings are enabled, meaning that if they're constantly disabled, your duplicates are not going to be applied as often. Another thing that we have is a transformer over here. This transformer is a little bit different. This transformer actually is adding power into the heavy conductive wire from a regular wire. This regular wire comes from one of my steam turbines. Because a steam turbine generates power, I wanted to feed that in back into the power grid system and by setting up your transformers backwards like this you could do that with any and all your trans any and all your steam turbines if that's what you want to do you guys could add in two steam turbines onto a conductive wire and link it back but for the most part we're just trying to recycle the power as much as we can another thing is if you guys didn't know transformers act as batteries so the smart battery caps off at 20,000. each transformer holds 4,000 watts of transformer right here and that's how we're distributing the power in our power strip another thing about our centralized power is how we keep it cool we actually have a simple steam turbine aqua tuner loop right there and we run a line through the box as you can see we're just using one tile segments inside of a tile so that the tile gets super chilled, maintains the thermal energy, and thus we cool down the box. This is because I don't want to spam refined pipes because they require refined metal. And you don't really need a lot of cooling to really cool down an industrial box like this. Just a couple of pieces exposed, the rest being insulated so that we could maintain a low temperature and spread that out over more tiles instead of having it in one area. But that has been the quick overview of our centralized power design. If you guys have any questions about design, leave a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys.